Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings. Why why did I say that weird? Welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is Nick Miller. I'm flying solo today, giving John the day off, but I am not solo. I am joined by an incredible duo, Boomer and Sarah of Multiply Media. They are doing some wicked stuff, some stuff that is so cool, and they have this brand new film score sound pack that has hit the world, and I, guys, I am so excited for you to see uh, to see what you guys can do with it. it the, the idea with it is it comes with uh, um, pads and hits and cello, piano, all sorts of instruments in certain keys so that you can add them into your films or possibly even create your own score. So it's going to be incredible. It's really, really going to change the industry, and I am so excited for you all to check it out. Real quick, before we jump in, I wanted to mention Wedditor, who is our sponsor. Wedditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. They are a wedding film editing outsourcing company, and they can save you time. They can save you um, energy when it comes to editing your films. Um, you know, the, the idea is they are going to emulate your films and then elevate your films. And uh, I've been using Wedditor for the past two or three years. Uh, they have really helped me get some time back in my business so that uh, I, I can focus on other things things like how to film weddings, but still know that I'm getting a high quality edit whenever I'm done. So if you would like more information about Wedditor, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedditor and check them out there. Well, without further ado, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump into this week's episode of the podcast with Boomer and Sarah from Multiply Media. Hello, Boomer and Sarah from Multiply Media. How are you guys doing today? We're doing, We're doing awesome. Great. I mean, uh, it's so crazy that all of us just happen to wear the exact same thing. I I uh, know it, it. It's ridiculous. If you're not watching on YouTube, you should head over to our YouTube channel and check out the video. But somehow, magically, I don't know. We just all showed up. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's not like you guys live together or anything, so you could have coordinated that. But I, you know, I'm I'm two states away, so mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know how it how it happened that way. Yeah, <laughs> kind of weird, but I'm I'm into it. It's cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, for for people that might not know who you are, just do a quick introduction. You've been on the podcast before, but uh, why don't you just give a quick introduction, who you guys are, where you're located, and you know maybe what the last year you guys have been up to. 100%. Yeah, we're Multiply Media. I'm Boomer. This is Sarah. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're married. Um, we've been married for about three and a half years. Thank you so much for having us on again. We got some really cool stuff to share with you guys and talk about and all the musical things. Um, we're based in Denver, Colorado. Um, what else? We shoot about 20 weddings per year. And um, we love music. Music is our passion. We are we're musicians coming into this filmmaking world, uh, and and learning about cameras and color. But our 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 baseline, our uh, what we're best at is is music and music production and audio engineering. And so it's uh it's been an awesome journey. Yeah, and in the past year we've basically just been traveling a bunch for weddings and expanding more into the educational space. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're traveling a ton. I know last fall you guys like, Hey, we want you to maybe, you know, we asked you like, Hey, maybe we want you to come out to our retreat in January. And you're like, our, our schedule is so busy. Like you, you guys were so slammy. Like, you know, we're just, we need to take some time off. Cause you, you were like, it was like every weekend you were in a different place and it wasn't like, Hey, we're driving two hours away. It's like, we're hopping on a flight or we're going over here or, you know, whatever you guys are super busy. I feel wild. like you are too. I mean, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we were, we were, pretty, we were. It, I yeah. think the first couple of years of any company has to be just an absolute grind. Um, at least that's that's what we chose to do, and now we're definitely scaling back and you know, mm -hmm. uh, like way less travel this year. I mean, if we get a Colorado wedding, we're like, yes, <laughs> yeah, we exactly. don't have to travel. <laughs> oh no. I know. I think we kind of got it out of our system. Not that we don't still want to travel. We still have a few trips um, for weddings and just personal this year. But um, yeah, I feel like we just spent a year of back to back, like legit going to two different states in one weekend type of thing. So it was a little bit cray. And um, cray. not that we <laughs> not that we necessarily got burnt out, but like it just felt yeah, it just feels like we got that crazy travel everywhere, be everywhere all the time uh, out of our system a little bit. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, I've shared it before when it comes to travel, it's, it's definitely something that can be a lot of fun and is really cool. But I remember hearing, you know, these photographers that like basically did destination all the time and they were complaining about, you know, being, you know, I'm like, shut up. Like you get to go to all these cool places. Like it was like, man, quit, quit complaining about it. You did. And then I experienced it and I was like, Oh, I understand what they're talking about. It can be draining. It can be exhausting. It's like, now, uh, an event that takes one day takes like three or four because of the travel and the flights and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, anyway, it's really, it's really cool to, to see what you guys are doing. And yeah, I agree boomer that getting into that sort of stuff is one of those things that you just have to experience it before you can really decide if it's what you want to do or what you not want to do. So, um, anyway, glad, glad you guys figured that out in a year only year three or four, whatever, wherever you guys are, rather than, um, taking you 10 years like myself to figure out some of those things. So anyway, (laughs) so, uh, you guys, uh, you know, you talked about music and, um, I don't know, I know that musician music is something you guys are passionate about, but you guys are just, uh, very, very creative people. Like, you know, there's, there's some people that, uh, it just, I don't know, I feel like it oozes out of, out of you and it, and it does, I feel like it oozes out of you both, you know, Boomer, I know you're doing a lot of stuff with music, but Sarah, you've started like painting and like doing some other stuff over there. Like I've seen all the stuff you guys are doing. So how, how important, um, would you say that just having a creative outlet for your, you know, like your business, your film business, you know, having that creative outlet, you know, to do something that's not necessarily filmmaking has been to, has that benefited, benefited your film business? Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I say that yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, so I recently, <clears throat> clear my throat. I recently got into live wedding painting and it's just been something that's kind of fostered like even more love for the wedding industry. I just, I feel like doing video, doing video, being filmmakers and traveling and working with couples. I already um, saw this side of it that, yeah, it's just something I, I love being a part of and to expand on that into paintings. And also just, I feel like both of the things I'm doing um, have a huge impact on people, like people seeing these really special moments captured through a painting. Um, yeah, it, it just means the world. And I feel like it, it's given me like almost like a revamp. I mean, we've mm-hmm. been doing weddings now for like three years. And so it's given me an extra depth of passion for, yeah, being in that environment and mm-hmm. getting to gift something to couples that they'll be able to cherish forever, like a film or a painting. And so it's, it's been really exciting for me how, quickly yeah. it's grown too and even if it was something i wasn't making money from it i don't know it it yeah it just feels like you i feel like lot. a kid yeah. yeah like getting to do something mm-hmm. that's super exciting for me and also like a really big challenge almost every painting i do i go through a stage where i'm like i don't know if i'm going to be able to finish this like i'm i this is major ugly phase like i might have to scrap this and start over and even having that challenge of like pushing through in something that you feel like you can't do, I'm all about like self development and stuff. And so that's that's like a huge thing for me in the process. And so, yeah, I don't know if that all makes sense. I I mean, it is super new. I think I'm still even gathering my thoughts around it. But it's all I know is it makes me feel super alive, and um, yeah, it just adds that extra layer of excitement towards what we're doing all around. I think, I think it's essential to, to any business, you know, or to your life, you know, to, to have creative outlets and, and to be creator, uh, be a creator We we are all creative. Um, you know, uh, we all have that thing that we desire to do, you know, uh, and, and the world desperately needs it. Like I'm, I'm, I'll use the word desperate, you know, every single person, um, we need people to dance their dance, to write their song, to um, build their business, um, to uh, to write their book. You know, and and it's a uh, when when people when other people see that, other people get incredibly inspired um, by that work and that piece of art. And so, yeah, I, I mean, besides weddings and and what we do we love music we love creating music we love writing songs i have my own like artist page you know on spotify 
And then I have a YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel, which is essentially a journal um, of what I get to, what I want to say, what's on my heart, um, wh what I'm processing through. And art is just a beautiful thing to just connect um, with your own self. And when you connect with your own self, other people actually see that and, and they want to connect to themselves too. And it also just gives you more, I don't know how to put it into words, but like I, I've seen you, you know, doing those creative projects and that are outside of wedding films. It gives you, it like refreshes your soul. So you, you have more to give to wedding films. Like the more you can yeah. do things that feed your creative, the creative parts of yourself, the more it'll fill you up to invest more in what you're actually doing as a filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's really Really good insight. Really cool. I was thinking as you were talking so many times, you know, when you get into the wedding industry, um, when people get into the wedding industry and they start, oh, watching just other people's wedding films. And so, you know, people are kind of trapped in this vacuum of watching kind of the same stuff, I mean, you know, different editing styles and things are different or whatever. But then someone comes along and does something different. And it's because they uh, spent time and energy maybe um, watching videos that are not weddings or they were inspired by how music moved them or they were inspired by something else and going outside of the wedding industry to find that inspiration and then bringing, bringing that stuff back in. Uh, it's, it's, it's really powerful. And, uh, mm. you know, I'm, I'm someone that as I'm listening, you know, to music, I kind of start getting pictures and stuff in my head of maybe direction I want to go or, or something rather than watching someone else's wedding film and like trying to recreate that, that kind of thing. So that's, that's, that's really good advice, advice there. Uh, just some, some wisdom from you both. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Stanton on the podcast, and he was he was talking about uh, creativity and um, how he believed that it's something that can be learned. Like it, you know, we, I I I have had this thing in inside my head. It was like, well, I'm 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 not a very good drawer. I can't draw very good, and so like that's a natural born talent. And you know, my wife, she's always been an artist. She's always been really good at that stuff. And so it's like, I, I can't get better. You know, like I, you either can draw or you can't draw, you can play music or you can't, you can do this, you know, like that's, that's been my mentality for a long time. And Stan was talking about, no, like dedicating yourself and, and learning and, and figuring things out and, and that kind of stuff can help you uh, become better and be more creative. You can learn how to be creative. You just kind of have to get your mind in that spot. And so I wanted to shift the conversation because you guys are so musical and music is something that you're you're both really passionate about. I wanted to shift this conversation a little bit to um, learning creativity, being creative um, when it comes to music. And uh, I know one thing, Boomer, that you like to talk about, or you say I can talk for days on, it's like music theory um, and just kind of different things behind that. So can you kind of open up the conversation uh, with music and what is music theory and how how does it apply to wedding videographers and what can we do with it, you know, to make our films and our work better? That's a heavy question, but I love it. I I've been studying music theory my entire life and I'm still just uh, overwhelmed by the, the beauty and the intricacy that is, is music. Uh, music theory is essentially the language of music, right? It is the way music is composed. It's the system of rules that govern how, how music is written. And, um, it, it organizes musical elements so that it is pleasing to the ear. Right. And so there's, there's rules, you know, and there's, there's, uh, topics that we can talk about, you know, there's, there's notes and pitches and chords and triads and, and keys and how chords fit in with keys. And, uh, it, it's a language, right? Um, but once you understand this language, um, it's like a superpower, you know, it, it's, uh, the ideas that you have in your head, you'll actually be able to do, right? So the ideas of um, wanting to change up a film or wanting to shift around a song um, or wanting to take your story into this dynamic, um, a low dynamic or a high dynamic, like that, you'll actually be able to do that knowing these basic foundation and and these rules of this language, right? And, and it's a language, right? Mm -hmm. So... We've all 
everyone listening to this podcast and, you know, me, uh, Sarah and Nick have mastered a language of English. Right. And it's very natural to us. Well, maybe I, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I, I mean, uh, I, I know, I know I talk a lot and I don't know where I'm going to go and I just keep, <laughs> keep talking. So I don't know how much I've mastered it, but yes, yes. I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> Michael Scott. Nice. Um, like I don't have to think like if I'm talking in past, present or future tense, I'm just naturally speaking, or mm -hmm. I don't have to look at any object in this room and go, you know, what is this? It's a pencil. Like I, I just know what that is, you know? Um, <laughs> and, and it's the same thing with like music theory, right? It's once we learn these basic foundational rules, um, it, it is very, very powerful to a story. And that come kind of comes into your, your second question of, how does this like even apply to being a, a wedding videographer? And I would say that once you have those rules, you'll be able to, to, um, I mean, first of all, not spend, you know, days and hours, you know, looking for a, a song off of music bed or any music licensing website, you, you'll know exactly like what you're looking for. You'll be able to, um, what is that? The paradox of choice. Have you heard about that? The, the, the more, basically, the more choices that you are presented with, the harder it is to make a choice. Like we think that if you have all sure. these options, it's going to make stuff so much easier, but it's sure. way easier if you have three, three things to pick from rather than a hundred. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. Yeah. If you go to Cheesecake Factory <laughs> and it, you, the biggest menu in the world, I think, I at Cheesecake novel. Factory, it's like all these different genres or genres. I'm thinking about music, <laughs> all these different dishes, and mm -hmm. you just get overwhelmed and you actually spend more time trying to pick what you want instead of going to In N Out. And it literally has four different options, you know, that you can have. And, yeah. and it's the same thing with, I think, <clears throat> knowing music theory, knowing what you want, knowing the instrumentation, knowing the the chord structure of what you're wanting. Um, going back to the Nashville number system. Oh, man, I could talk about this forever. Uh, and and actually narrowing it down by category. I mean, music bed does such a great job of, of like the the fast pace it goes into the tempo and to the key and to the um to the instrumentation you know let's say i just want some cello or i just want a single instrument or i want to build like it gets just from music bed being this big to now this big right <laughs> hopefully you're watching this on video <laughs> um, he went he went sense. he held out his arms very wide and said this big, and then put his hands close together. English. So, I, I, I'm still learning. Oh. Does that make sense, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yes, it does. Yes, it does. I, I, I see what you're saying. I think um, whenever you know we're talking about this, one, uh, most people that might be listening, it's it's kind of a daunting thing, right? You're like, I've been studying, you know, you're in your 20, you know, 25, whatever. I've been studying music my whole music theory my whole life. And you're like, Okay, sure. um, I just started filming weddings and I've never even heard the phrase music theory. And so it's like, well, am I screwed? You know, like like that that kind of thought. But I know that there's a lot of things in here um, that is a part of music theory is the big idea. You know, for instance, um, knowing how keys work together. You know, if you if you if you have a song that's in C major, what keys should you go to if you're doing multiple songs, like knowing that kind of stuff? And, um, you know, like I've been before I've, I've edited a film. What one thing that I, I have recently stumbled on was a key chart, but it also had um, like what keys to go to if you want to go up in energy or if you want to go down in energy. Right. And so uh, I, I before I'd be editing a song where the first song was actually like really slow, but then I'd go to this upbeat song next and it felt like something fell out of it, even though the song was a lot like faster, you know, beats. Sure. And, and it was like something just it, it didn't feel right. And I was like, why isn't this as high energy? It was because when I look back at that chart, like the energy level went down. I was like, oh, this is, you know, there's so many things. So I think maybe the question um, practically or. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about theory. If, if people want to get started in learning yes. some of these things, what what are some steps? What are some resources? What are some things that you guys would recommend people looking into when it when it comes to this, so they can take some steps to learning a little bit about this big idea of music theory? 
I think the most basic idea to really, really get started is understanding root keys, right? And so let's say you find your first song, whether that be in it's the intro of the song, or I know some people kind of work backwards and they start in the middle. We kind of work chronologically. So let's say you have a song that you you believe is perfect for for the film is the home run song, you know, the thing that most inspires you. Um, it's music bed makes it really, really simple to do is just scroll down and find what key that song, that home run song is in. And then clicking that key, let's say it's in C major, we're talking about C major, um, clicking on that key and then thousands of other songs show up in that in that same key and that's going to give you a very easy um transition from each song uh you know there's usually uh, what would you say like three to four music uh, you know uh licensed song in a film around that range yeah yeah i i think i think we're definitely when i first started i remember like most every song it was like or every video was like one song you know and kind of just yeah. extended it but yeah i think people are definitely opening up their minds to including two if not three or four i think the one that we're currently editing it's eight minutes and i think we have five songs you know jammed in wow. there or something like that so yeah um and yeah it's i would say that's pretty much the basic rule that that we try to go by. I wouldn't say that, you know, you have to do this and this is, but this is just going to ensure you that the the songs are going to run very, very well together. Um, it's going from a root note to the same root note. Um, and uh, especially from like a high energetic song to possibly like an ambient cinematic song, that transition is going to be flawless. Um and then, you know, we could get into like the the two other um, ideas that you probably could transition to is is the four or five. And and right now we're using the, the national number system um, of kind of naming each um, naming each note in a key by a, a number. And um, yeah, so. If you guys have time, I would look up the Nashville number system um, or the circle of fists. Is that the chart that you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a circle. Yes, it does have numbers on it, but it has the keys and it has the majors on the outside, the minors on the inside, and just kind of how they relate yeah. to, to each other. Those, those chord charts are, I think, the next step um, if you would like to understand how to um, better transition songs and, and make the film more cohesive. And I don't think your your um, viewer is going to necessarily like understand like, wow, what a great, tra uh, you know, like he transitioned from the one to the four, you know, or th they're not going to like know that technically, but subconsciously I do believe that that uh, the view were will understand. Wow, that was an incredible, seamless transition um, of songs and and a cohesive one film. You know, this isn't like three films broken up into each other. This is one one piece of art. Yeah, um, you know, it's it it's almost one of those things where you want it to flow together so well that the viewer doesn't doesn't even notice that you switch songs like that's that's what you want it's whenever you have one song that abruptly goes into another one and it could be because you're going from like a fade out and then a hard start on the next one or the keys are different or the something is just off and it's like or the clip that you're going it's just in a weird spot and they're like oh something was off about that like that's that it's probably more you don't want them to notice it. like they're not going to notice it because it's designed in a way to flow together and fit together that yeah. just goes one one song into into the next one so uh man man all, all really good uh, good stuff sarah is this is this kind of stuff when you're talking about is this like do you mess with this stuff or are you just like boomer you 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 take it all i'm just gonna let you run Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I've learned a little bit from Boomer, but I definitely approach this as like more of the outsider. I mean, I, I love music. We do covers together. We've written music together. 
but I don't really understand music theory. I didn't study for 27 years now. Um, and, <laughs> and it's cool because I do learn so much from him, but I still feel like I'm, I mean, I couldn't even tell you what the number system, the Nashville number system looks like. I think you showed me once before, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's something that because of his passion for it and his knowledge for it and our ability thus far for me to just be like, you, uh, you take care of that <laughs> side of things. Um, yeah. I've been able to see how much it's impacted our films and our business. And mm. so it is something I'm super fascinated by and wanting to learn more about, but it's funny because I almost have that approach of it's daunting or that mindset. It's daunting and it's overwhelming to think mm-hmm. about like really diving into it. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, I would say I probably know as much as you do about yeah. theory. Yeah. 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 I know, I know when it comes to, um, for instance, with me and my wife, you know, I'm primarily do, you know, the editing, you know, when it comes to, you know, putting the clips in and, and all that kind of stuff. And I've, I've been kind of teaching her and showing her how to do that, but you know, she's still coming to me with what I think is, you know, basic things like, how do I, how do I fade a clip to black? You know, just, and it's not, it it is just because she doesn't know. And I'm sitting here as someone that knows all this stuff, like, well, why don't you know that or or whatever? And I think that whenever we talk about a subject like this, whether it's music theory, Mm -hmm. whether it's audio design, whether it's color correction, any, like any facet of the industry, um, we, we can get, we can get really lost in listening to people that know what they're talking about because it's like, we're trying to go from, I don't know anything to, I want to be as tech savvy with this stuff as boomer. And it's like, I, I can't, I can't, I would need to spend the next few months learning and stuff to really have a deep conversation, you know, with the technical side of things. But what, what my, like with my wife is doing, she's like, I'm learning step by step and asking questions along the way. And mm-hmm. I think that that is the approach that if you want to get better in the film is not, not trying to do the entire thing all at once, you know, mm-hmm. take the step, you know, like you're talking about, okay, let's start with in your films. Like, man, my transitions are weird between this song and that song. Okay. Let's start. Okay. Are we going to go by key? And then whenever we have the key figured out, what can I do to make these transitions seem a little bit more seamless between the songs. Like what is going on in the film that makes the transition make sense? And I think taking small little steps is really, is really going to help you rather than trying to do, to do all of it all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I would say I've like naturally picked up so many little things along Mm -hmm. the way that make me feel confident in at least building out music for a film but it's cool because I I'm also excited to learn even more, you know? Yeah. Uh, another thing that I was thinking about while you were talking was just like, we have, we have leaned into, you know, our strengths. Um, I would say we're probably like a five <laughs> of a filmmaker, you know, of five like, of <laughs> like of actual visuals, you know? Um, I don't feel super confident about our color. Um, it, there's still a lot I feel like I need to understand about our cameras, you know, and our gear and camera movements. And but man, like I feel like we know music, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I and that that's the thing that we've decided to lean into because music is a story, you know. Mm-hmm. You you have a um the listener is being taken on a journey and the the melody is almost the character the main character um and the hero, and of the so- the the hero the yeah yeah of the of, of the song and there's tension and release and there's dynamics and there's um you know uh, certain lengths and patterns and and that has really transformed our business and so i'm just thinking like too you know if if you are a musician listening to this podcast we talked about maybe people that don't understand um music but for the person that 
does understand music that may, maybe feels self-conscious in their their visuals, you know, lean into the music, you know, because that's that's what we did. And that's where we started to find success in our business. Does that make, does that make sense? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, totally. And I would, I would even say if like if you're not someone who knows music, but you have a draw towards it, just like we were saying with you talking about creativity with Cody, like it is something that can be learned as long as you have an interest and a spark for it and you put the time and investment into learning. One question that we see wedding filmmakers asking, what is the best site for licensing music? We have one answer, Musicbed. I have been exclusively using Musicbed since 2016 and our films are better because of it. I have been told during consultations that couples love our films because they feel raw, authentic, and that the music wasn't cheesy. Musicbed has a roster of incredibly talented musicians, bands, and composers who pour their hearts into their work and you can hear the difference. Find the perfect song with Musicbed's intuitive search features like genre, mood, beats per minute, and key, which is probably my favorite of the search perimeters. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed to do what I did and take your wedding films to the next level. Use promo code HTFW22 at checkout to receive one month free with the purchase of any annual subscription. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. One, as we're, uh, you know, you're talking about music being a character or, you know, music being, you know, how, to, how you can kind of use the music in your film to, um, you know, help help tell that story. Um, are there are there things that you guys are looking for? I, I, I know it, it varies so much on wedding to wedding, couple to couple, you know, film to film, you know, that kind of stuff. But are there are there things that you guys are, are looking for or when it comes to the um setting up of the film, how you're structuring the film, you know, are you, you know, finding a song and then like just listening to it for a while and kind of visualizing it or are like, what, what's kind of your process with that after you find a song for you Mm. to know, yes, this is, this is the song that that we need to use. Visual uh, visualization is a really fun exercise that I love to use. One of my favorite quotes, I think it's C.S. Lewis is, um, I close my eyes so I can see. Um, one, the, the whole idea of seeing is, is having a vision, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it's, it's not always physically seeing. And so closing your eyes, listening to music. Um, and after, uh, after you visualize, uh, maybe that first song, I, I have the edit in my head. You know, we, I think we underestimate our imagination, you know, a lot of the times. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would say we edit from that place. You know, we have our song um, and, and that song has to be a home run. That, ha- that, that song has to fit that couple perfectly. The first kind of our philosophy is the first minute, minute and a half has to be just them. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then into that, um, you know, we would find the same key of that song usually. Um, and then, uh, you know, to something more, maybe a little bit ambient or cinematic um, and then start to build. And then usually right as the bride is starting to walk down the aisle, we would transition to a song in the four or five, um, the the national number system. Um and to have that like little lift of mm-hmm. that the bride is coming. Um, and then from there, we would transition to um, what Cody has uh, coined the hype sandwich. <laughs> have you <laughs> talked to you about that? Um, no, but it's like you start off hype and you end hype. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. yeah and and yeah. well, hype usually means like hype, you know, like party. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Hype. Uh, I I take more as um, energy, mm-hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. and 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 it doesn't have to be like a hype song to have energy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's good. That's good. I I, I really like that point of learning. Um, you know the uh, the number system and at, at a moment that needs it, where emo- like the emotion warrants it like changing song or changing key or whatever to sure. lift that up so that it's more, uh, you know, power. like whenever, like I, I, I thinking about, you know, sing, singing songs in church and stuff and then like, Hey, we're doing this course again, but they raise the pitch and it's like, Oh, like it just, 
like brings it up and it makes it like feel like it feels better or lifts you up or, you know, kind of it's, it's applying. I mean, they're the same principles, right? It's like, we want to evict some sort of emotion. And whenever you are changing the key, raising the pitch or whatever, I don't know if I'm using the right words. I was in band, so I kind of know some some of this stuff, but like, what did you play? I played, do you really want to know? You really want to know? Wait, can I guess? Can I guess? You can guess. I see you as a bassist. Just no. Not no. not that kind of band, like like band, like in- marching band oh, kind of music. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Okay, get- I was in, from sixth grade through ninth grade. I played this instrument. Okay, it has to be brass. I see you as a like as a brass. Okay, all right, trombone. It was not the trombone, and it was not brass. Ah, okay. dang. All right, what is it? The clarinet. Clarinet. That's sick. Oh, I love A woodwind. Because okay. because every whenever you go into band, like my daughter's in fifth grade band, I would yeah. say that half of her band is saxophones. Like it's yeah. like all of the kids play saxophone. Yeah. yeah. And I really oh. wanted to play saxophone because in in our band in middle school, you know, it was the first quarter we played the recorder, and then we got to pick our instrument after that. So, but I had the band teacher that was a clarinet teacher. And so she talked like all of the saxophone players into playing clarinet. So Uh, (laughs) clarinet's sick. Woodwind. I like it. We'd be buddies. We'd probably be sitting right next to each other. What did you play? I played uh, the alto and soprano sax. Mm, Okay. I did. I did in, in the seventh grade final band concert, I did get to play the bass clarinet. So it was like, you know, the big. That's sick. Anyway, good story. Good story. That's like yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's what my daughter plays, and um, oh, yeah, cute. Sure, sure. It's great. It's great. She's <laughs> she's learning it. She's learning it. Um, one one thing that I I think this is maybe the point that I was I was going to say is you know you boomer were make lean into the thing that you're good at, you're passionate about. You know if if you have that, you know and. Um, for, for some people out there, it's like, you're, you're really good at like visualizing and the editing and like, you, you're just so good at that other people. It might be music and some people it's audio. And I think of you guys and I think of, uh, people like KEJ who kind of came from the music background. And I think that both of you have really taken off as a, as, as with, with your films and what you are doing and stuff. It's because you have leaned into that professional background uh, that you have gotten and it's like I'm learning the other stuff along the way and getting you know you, you're yourself like color like we're not we're not the best at it but you're but you're learning and yeah. um I I think that for listeners out there that's a, a valuable lesson is instead of saying man I wish I could do blank like multiply media blank like John Bone films blank like wild you know fill in the whoever what what are the things that you feel passionate about that you excel at that you know that you can do really really well and lean into those and then build build the other stuff around it and it might be something like I'm really good at at selling like I'm a really good business person well yeah. build your business around that and then kind of learn learn the, the stuff the other way you might be really creative okay be really creative and then learn the business stuff as you go along. You know, there's, there's lots of different things. And so leaning into, uh, the thing that you are passionate about, the thing, your, your base knowledge set, whatever it is that got you into this, um, Mm -hmm. I think is going to take you, take you a long, a long way. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was my thought that I think fell out. That was amazing. I love that, man. I also think as far as creativity goes, we were talking earlier about like, you know, music and art. I think creativity is found in like every area, even if it's a less creative field, like business, you were yeah, saying, like yeah. mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of things that aren't typically known as creative, but there's a lot of fields like okay. I mean, a lawyer or something like have, so have creative- you guys seen on your TikToks or your Instagram reels, these Excel spreadsheet people? Like I somehow oh. fell into like Excel spreadsheet TikTok. algorithm somehow, somehow, I don't know, but it's like, they have like, you're talking about not being like being creative in an uncreative field. It's like, they're figuring out ways how I can like set up all this stuff so I can push three buttons and then my whole sheet just went. So there's like so many things that if you just apply yourself to, you can do crazy stuff, even if it's not quote unquote 
creative. Sorry to interrupt you. No, but no, no, I was no, doing, I was doing what you're doing. Like I had a thought I needed to get it out there or else we're going to take another five minutes where I know. Oh, I love it. I love it. No, all you. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's so true. Yeah. That's one, one thing I feel like I'm trying to drill into people sometimes is like, they're like, well, I'm not creative. I'm like, yes, you are. Like, it doesn't matter if you're creative about being a mom, like, I, whatever you're doing, there's there's so much creativity to be found in whatever field or thing you're putting your time into. So I even think acknowledging your own creativity and something opens up your mind to expand in your area and your craft in a whole new mm. way. Yeah, man. So good. So good. So um, we're going to jump into our question of the day presented by Wedding Post House. Have you guys heard of Wedding Post House? Do you know of Wedding Post House? Tell us. So. Yeah, tell Dude, us. Dude, you guys, you guys. So Wedding Post House, um, they are an outsourcing company that just goes through and syncs and calls your footage. So mm -hmm. you send it to them. They take, it's like a four or five day turnaround. It's usually the same week and you will get your footage back where everything is synced up together, together and all of your footage, they've gone through it and just like kind of cut off the bad stuff, but it's usable for your film. And then they organize it by this was bride prep. This was groom prep. This was oh, wow. you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's all colored. They do Da Vinci, uh, final cut and premiere. So you just send it to them. They, uh, they, they get you, they get you hooked up. So, um, uh, that's like yeah. my least favorite part of everything. Yeah, yeah. And so for people that, you know, want to outsource, but yet they still want that creative control, like uh -huh. here it's like I can send it off, I get it back, and now I'm the part that I hate doing is done so I can get in being the fun creative part, right? So anyway, you guys I'm really so need to check cool. out Wedding Post House how to film weddings.com slash wedding post house. If you like a little bit more information, but we're going to jump into our question of the day presented by wedding post house. And, um, do you, do you, do you know of something? Do you have a resource? It's like whenever I start, uh, editing a film, you know, when I'm putting stuff together and it's like, I love this song and this is the moment I want to do something, but I, there, there's something that's missing or you want to take, you want to take your song kind of to a next level or you have a vision or idea. And I'm like, okay, I need uh, some sort of drum hit or snare, like some sort of instrument hit, but like, I don't know what it is. And you go into something like, like sound, sound stripe or sound snap or wherever trying to find this specific thing. And it just like, it doesn't work, you know, because there isn't a good library for that. Do you guys know of anything that could be, really helpful to people that want to take their their music in their films to the next level and do something transform it into something better wow what a great question nick <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i didn't i didn't tee anything up at all i promise that was incredible <laughs> um yes as a matter of fact we do we we are releasing a, a sound pack called the film score um and it's something that we've Man, I've been working on for the past almost two months now. It's an idea that I had almost a year ago, uh, and it's gonna, you know, include pads and drones and rhythms and hits and risers, all in melodic keys. So there, each sample is gonna be in all twelve different keys over eight hundred <laughs> uh, wave uh, wave files and 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 sounds, and it's. It's something that like, you know, uh, like we have sp uh, there, there's so many filmmakers who spend hours and hours and multiple days uh, just trying to find the perfect song. Right. Mm -hmm. The perfect song with the dynamics that are idea uh, are ideal or the perfect instrumentation, um, you know, or the perfect length even. And sometimes that song like never comes, you know, because it's, yeah. it's got to be perfect. And and so the the film score sound pack is just a chance to take control of the dynamics and of the instrumentation and of the length um of your song and and film um so it, it's essentially like musical freedom without leaving your video editing software right you don't need to use a daw a digital audio workstation for this um you know it's a daw 
Duh. <laughs> Sounds really cool. Abbreviate. It saves time. It saves time. <laughs> um, why use why use long word when short word would do? Sea <laughs> <C> world. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So there's basically two fundamental um, ways you can you're going to be able to use this pack. Um, you can use it with any music license software. So uh, sh- what we talked about before of finding the key to your song and adding pads and adding riffs and adding you know drones or or hits. Um, you know, there's piano hits. Um, and cellos and violins um man we've we have spared no expense to uh creating this this pack and and we really feel like it's incredibly cohesive with with every sound you know any producer any musician can make a sound be cool but can you make an an entire library of sounds sound cohesive with each other it's a very very difficult thing to do and and then the the other fundamental reason you would be using this is essentially composing your own piece of music, right? So grabbing sounds from the, all the same key and putting them together however you want. You know, it's I really think this is a revolutionary product because I have not been able to find anything like this on the internet. You, you know, you can find stems of songs and you can find, um, you know, cool sound libraries, but not in all 12 keys. Uh, mm-hmm. And so um, it's it's giving power to the filmmaker and it's bridging the gap between mm-hmm. the filmmaker and these music license websites uh it's yeah. it's reverse engineering it and so oh man i'm excited about it i'm excited yeah 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 i've uh i've gotten a, a peek at it and it's it's incredible i'm um i i'm I haven't gotten to, I, I've looked through the library and stuff. There's so much stuff in there. You know, it's like, what, what, what do I do? Like, what do I pick? You know, like I, but, um, we're, we're finishing up a film and I'm really excited to, um, I have some ideas that I can uh, add some stuff in, you know, I was kind of waiting for, for that, that process with it. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. I remember after the flow pack came out, I was, I was talking to Boomer and, um, I was like, man, you know, I, I really wish there was something, you know, that I think I was describing what you have created in in some regard to some stuff with it, but I was like I didn't know how to phrase it or I did I didn't know what it what it was, and so this is definitely something that I have had on my mind. That man, I wish that there was something that did this. I wish that I could find these sound effects or add these things in, but then I might find something. But because it was a a cello or a piano, like it clashed with the song I was using because it was, it was in a different key. And so that's, that's so cool. And that's so powerful. And, you know, think of this stuff. You can make a song longer at the beginning by adding just kind of some ambient noise or at the end or in the mid, like there's, there's just so many possibilities of it. And, um, man, I think it's, it's exciting. I'm excited for you guys that you have, you have put this thing out. And, yeah. and two, the, with the purchase of this pack, um, we're giving away a, essentially a, a music course. Um, it, it's a three-part course. Uh, you know, the first part is going to be about music theory. So we're just diving into chords, um, notes, structures, um, you know, just a basic lesson. We'll go over the Nashville number system um, and the circle of fists. And then the second one is how to use this pack with licensed music. So, you know, using different ideas of adding sounds to the beginning, middle or end to an already existing song. And then the third will be like the best ways to create a song from scratch, you know, mm-hmm. and kind of like roadmaps and patterns that you could do or, you know, different dynamics of um, how to bring rhythms in and how to introduce BPM and tempo. So, uh, I, I understand that this can be intimidating and, and opening up a pack full of 800 uh, WAV files, like you said, is like, whoa, like this is a lot. We right. want to actually equip you with these tools so you can be successful using this pack. And, and I would actually say that um, th- this is essential mm. for using this pack. Uh, mm. it, it, this is not a sound effects pack. Yeah. Everyone knows what a sound effects pack is. They work in all keys. These aren't whooshes. These aren't glitches, whatever, booms. These are melodic samples and stems that when you know how to use it, 
it is incredibly powerful. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, yeah, I think this is this is our legacy. You know, I, I really do believe that uh, music means more to us than sometimes I can actually put into words. Um, mm. You know, sometimes uh, exact um, chord progressions or concerts or melodies have changed and saved my life. Um, and it, we're, we're talking about a very spiritual thing. It is a very spiritual tool um, that uh, goes straight to the heart. I talked about this last time, uh, moves past all logic, goes straight to the heart and to emotion. And, and when you have something this powerful, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it can be used like to tell very, very powerful stories. So yeah, we're excited about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think... Uh, I think you shared a Insta story maybe a week or two ago when you were putting some of this stuff together. It was with Drew and just kind of you like you put you composed something from this pack and you were just kind of playing it with him. And he's like, dude, what is And you're like, I made, you know, just like it was just like mind blowing and really, really cool. So uh, I'm so excited for you guys uh, putting this together. I'm excited to see how uh, how people are going to use it. And I'm sure that that you guys are excited to see what people are going to compose and I'm sure that you're just impatiently waiting for that person that's going to um, create an entire wedding film only using your sound pack, you know, like you, taking all this stuff, doing all this together and then like a five minute film. It's just going to be your sound pack. All in all in video editing software. I, yeah. it's, oh, that would be insane. Yeah, that would be so yeah. great. And that like changes the game, you know, mm-hmm. I, I really do believe it. It can work with me already existing music and, and, um, with certain rules and patterns and Mm -hmm. the knowledge you can create something. It's, it's for the person who wants to dive deep into music, you know? That's awesome. That's incredible. That's so awesome. And, uh, it is on, it is on sale right now. Okay. Head over to your website, multiply hyphen media.com to pick it up. Yeah. It'll be up there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And um, I, Boomer and Sarah are graciously offering 25% off of the Film Score Sound Pack. Just enter promo code HTFW25 at checkout and you can pick that up uh, today at 25% off. Well, uh, Boomer, Sarah, thank you guys so much um, for hanging out with me this morning. Do you guys have any. Last remark, Sarah, I, I want to give you an opportunity, you know, to, to share something if you've been thinking about it so that you're not walking away from this conversation and like, oh, I wish I would have said that. Anything you guys want to add before we hop off of here? It doesn't seem like I have something I've been waiting. No, I talk, no, 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 oh, okay. it, it no, doesn't. No, I, no, no. Well, no, I mean, the one thing I will say is it's cool that I'm a part of Multiply Media. I didn't make the sound pack. I feel like I supported him as a good wife to get the time he needed to like get away, create all these beautiful melodies and sounds. Um, But it's cool because me coming from someone who doesn't know a ton about music theory, like I'm excited to use this and I've already actually used it for quite a few videos I've made. Um, And it like, I think taking the, the mini, I'm going to call it a mini course that you created for the sound pack, I think is crucial but it also, I don't know, it just excites me because I feel like I finally have the tools to create something that I've been drawn to diving deeper into. And so it's fun that this course is for anyone who wants to learn more about music, and that includes me. And so, um, yeah, I just, I finally see a tangible way to take steps into learning and practicing the idea of like building music or enhancing the songs from music bed. Um, and I've already seen that in myself and how, yeah, it just excites me. Like it makes me feel like I have a whole other toolbox to use, um, when it comes to sound and music. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I, I, I like a, a whole new toolbox. It's like whenever we learn more information and we, um, understand things. It's like our, our mind has been opening up to even more possibilities. Like, Oh no, this is, this is how things is. You know, it's only this song and I can, you know, 
cut it on on the measure and you know put it together but you know I can't do anything else to it really but then you learn oh no you can and you can't and it's like oh you know wow what can I do now uh, it's it's very cool. limitless so that's 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 good stuff thanks for that and where uh, you know I, I shared your website but if people want to uh, you know follow along with you guys or you know see what you're up to where where can they do that yeah just on multiple media uh, we're we're on Instagram and TikTok and TikTok and yeah that's about it i do have one more question though for okay. our audience okay what's your question who wore it better <laughs> <laughs> i'm not Rocks. oh man i'm not i'm not wearing i'm, I'm still in my pj pants but um, <laughs> i'm not but i have i have those those really cool pants um uh, if you if you guys say that i'm wearing it better you're wrong Oh my gosh. We're just no, yeah. We're borderline obsessed or arch enemy. Who knows? I I, it's like it goes back and forth. It goes, it goes back and forth. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with me uh, today. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know our listeners do. So, thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Boomer and Sarah, so much for joining uh, us on the podcast today. I am so excited about this film score pack. Man, uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm editing a film right now, and I'm really excited to use it, some of it in there. Can't wait to see what happens. Listen, friends out there, if you are not a part of our Facebook group, we want you to be a part. We want you to join in on the conversation. Uh, there's over 15,000 wedding videographers in there right now, and we want you to connect with them and learn and be in inspired and ask your questions and help other people out. So all you need to do is go to Facebook and search for the How to Film Weddings group. That's all you need to do. Search for that um, on Facebook and you can be a part of the conversation. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, we will see you.